So everything in the contents of this video um, is still up under a uh, non-tradable agreement unless a donation is made to uh, my PayPal account, which is 13signsastrology at gmail.com. Whatever you donate, it will just, you'll just be able to trade on that level. That's pretty much how it works. So um, I just want to go ahead and show you guys what I gained from going on what I call a reincarnation fact-finding mission. And I came into acquaintance with someone that, from my research, I believe is Madame Blavatsky, reincarnated. Um, and this was given to me by a reincarnate of Madame Blavatsky. Um, she's actually from Minnesota when I was out there. And she gave me this tiger's eye, and I'm pointing this out because I spent... This is worth a lot of money to me. Um, it's worth over a million dollars to me because of the fact that I spent a lot of um, interest and I to gain this. What do I mean by that? I spent a lot of um, spiritual energy to get this because I had to actually track down this three years before I got it. I knew I was going to meet the incarnate of Madame Blavatsky three years before I did. And I went on a mission to actually manifest this and I did it. And it's worth a lot of money because of the fact that the interest and energy that I spent in looking for this person that gave me this and the fact that it turned out to be this person. She's a reincarnate of Madame Blavatsky. And I want to point this out too. When you talk about reincarnation, um, it's not limited to one person, meaning that powerful souls can share the vessel of many beings. This is what you gotta remember, of many beings. So when I say that I met and incarnate, that doesn't mean that it, it's only limited to that one person. This is a soul group with I mean, powerful beings and entities like Tahuti and strong entities like Sekhmet and Besinim. The thing that makes them so powerful is they can incarnate in a soul group which is very important, meaning that they're not limited to being in one person. It could be a group of people because of the fact that all the ritual work and things that they've done, that you done took out this one person. That's what happens with karma when the government and stuff like that takes out powerful people. They think they got rid of them, then they come back and it's like 20 of them because it's a group. And when you mess with a powerful soul, they multiply. So when you take them out, they don't. It's, it doesn't deduct like if you take one of them out, it won't deduct, it'll multiply, it won't subtract, it won't divide, it'll multiply. So that's what happens with powerful entities. So she is a part of this powerful group that I believe is Madame Blavatsky. And um, I was able to get this stone, just want to kind of point it out and let you guys know how powerful the mind really is. And how not only that, how you can start putting prices on uh your spiritual dreams and goals and how they're worth something and how to actually appraise it. So that's what I do, man. I'm a spiritual analyst. You can just say that. And I'm able to use the spirit world to gain resources in the physical world. And it's very challenging or it's very rewarding. I say it's very challenging because of the fact that I live like this. Everything that you manifest, you have to manifest it from the unseen. Meaning that it has to be in your mind's eye first. It's not about what you want. It's about manifesting what's in your mind first. And then once you get a clear visual, a clear perception on what's in your mind, then you begin to live off of that and manifest that. And then over time, you figure out a way to actually put a price value on that or some type of a... Um, so-called dollar amount on your spiritual dreams so what am i saying is that you are a reader you're a spiritualist and you're like i don't really know what it's worth i don't really know what's your energy worth what do you want to gain from it what did you put into it before you did the reading this is how you appraise the value of something it's based upon how you feel see some really rich people are very particular it's not about money see people think rich people are greedy rich people are they live in a certain way Spiritually rich people. This is what I'm talking about. Rich, ignorant people. 
that are giving money from lotteries and they don't know how to make no money. They just gave it to them. But spiritually rich people, they live a certain kind of way, right? And this is what I want to kind of point out. Then I'll shut down. They don't, it's not based on the value of what they want to make money from. Everything is based on the value of the service itself. Meaning that sometimes things that they do will be free. It's just like me. Some things I do are free. It's not about the money. There's some things I do to me is priceless. And I want to make a lot of money from. So like this, this is priceless to me. I want to make a lot of money from it. 